Acts 18. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to 1st and 2nd Corinthians. Corinth. Corinth. The other two epistles of Paul, they're not written yet. He's got to visit the, the church and later on, when he's away from the church, he's got to send letters to it. But here's the two churches or the two epistles written to one church, Corinth. And then you can put, you can on your own with the book of Acts, you can put these, these epistles in order yourself by laying out the book of Acts. Be interesting thing to go through the book of Acts and write down. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see. He was at uh, Thessalonica first, then Corinth. So why are the Bible books in the order that they are in? I don't know, but it is inspired by the Holy Spirit. I'll say that. And found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, and was and yeah, with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. And you could probably, if you do a search, you could probably find when this time period was. Here I got A.D. 54. And came on to them. So he goes to Corinth and he runs into these two Jews. And because he was the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, worked. For by their occupation, they were tent makers. So what was Paul? He made tents. Tents were a common housing. And when you're out in the desert with the wind and sand and all that, tents need to be fixed. Tents, you needed new tents. So there, there's a market. Paul is working on the missionary field. He's earning money. Because he's got expenses. And the condition, they can't help, they can't support Paul fully. Especially not the Jews back in Jerusalem. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath. So the operation that Paul does is he goes into a city, he finds a synagogue, he goes in there, he sits in the service, then he uses that opportunity and the Old Testament to preach to the Jews. And you got to understand this because if you're going to work with a Jew, if you're going to witness to a Jew as I've tried few times in my life I had the ability they're not going to listen to Matthew Mark Luke John Acts and rest they're not going to listen to the New Testament they don't believe the New Testament from Matthew to Revelation they will not listen to you and if you do want to be a proper witness to a Jew you better know that Old Testament because that's what Paul's doing and that's how you're going to have to show them about Jesus Christ the Old Testament And that's exactly what Paul's doing. He has no New Testament. Right now he probably has only that epistle that came from uh, James and Peter in Jerusalem. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. So it looks like in, all, in these places that even the Greeks are going to the synagogue. So they really haven't separated themselves completely from the Gentiles. I guess their money is good as enough as anybody else's money. As you got churches today, they will bring in the worldly people, the unsaved Christians, the worldly Christians, because their $5 bill is just as good as a saved person's $5 bill. And then you wonder why the churches are in a mess they are in today. But, and when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, remember in chapter 17, they were going to meet with Paul. While Paul's waiting, he sees this, this statue or monument to the unknown God, and he gets up and preaches. While waiting for Silas and Timothy, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. So he's still waiting for Silas and Timothy, and he's still preaching. He's preaching Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the one that that nation was to hope for, that prophet. When they opposed themselves and blaspheming, he shook his raiment, and he did more than his shoes. He shook his raiment and said unto him, Your blood be upon your heads. 
That's kind of what they said when they, when they had Jesus crucified. His blood be upon our, us and our children. Your blood be upon your own heads. I am clean. From thenceforth I will go unto the Gentiles. Now if he's going to quote the Old Testament properly, Ezekiel said the fingertips. My hands are clean of, of the blood of your souls. I've done what I'm supposed to. I have been that watchman, but your blood be upon your own heads. That's what Israel said when Pilate and Jesus are standing there. And Pilate wants to set him free. And he said, well, what do you want me to do with him? And their response to the nation was, let his blood be upon us and our children. I think Paul heard that. And I think Paul is quoting them right here. Fine. You know what? That curse you put yourself under. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justus. One that worshiped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. So he took care of the synagogue. But he loved the Lord and he worshiped the Lord. And Crispus. The chief ruler of the synagogue believed on the Lord with all his house, and many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed, and were baptized. Crispus lost his job, I guarantee, in that verse. There was no more that he was chief anything of that synagogue. Well, how, how do you know that? Verse 6. When they opposed themselves and blasphemy, he shook his hand. They're not going to stand for Christmas blaming this Jesus they rejected. You lost your job. And watch. And many of the Corinthians here and believed and were baptized. There's the start of the Corinthian church right there. They got a renegade from, from the, uh, uh, the synagogue now in their church. So Paul's preaching to them. They get saved. Then they get baptized. Then spoke, then spake the Lord to Paul in a night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak. And behold thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. Well, that's a remarkable claim by God. It's the most carnal church. It's the church that represents America today. And, Paul, and Jesus said, I got much people from there. So there's not just one church of Corinth. There's a lot of churches. And they couldn't get in their buggy and drive 20, 30 miles. I mean, walking distance to get to church. And he continued there a year and six months. 18 months teaching the word of God among them and they needed it as carnality they were Paul will write a letter to him say listen what's this I hear this guy is sleeping with his father's wife you guys have got old doctor preacher this one or preacher man this one oh he's like Man, he had to deal with a lot of kids. He had to deal with them with tongues. He had to deal with them signs. He had to deal. I mean, when we, if we get Lord willing to Corinthians, man, they were just so. Uh, but even still, Jesus said, they're mine. And when Galileo, with the deputy of Acadia, the Jews made insurrection. That's an uprising against civil and political authority. And that's what's going on in America today because one person didn't get into the White House. So don't call the Bible old archaic when you've got the same thing that's going on, going on right now. These people are rioting in the streets. They are causing a commotion because they're not getting their own way. Saying, this fellow persuadeth men to worship God contrary to the law. And that law would be the law that Paul is preaching from. That's read in the synagogue, the law of Moses. 
again, like Pilate, they're taking their their beliefs and bringing it to a Gentile. He don't care. Pilate would have been happy to get Jesus off his back. This guy, Galileo, would be happy to get Paul off his back. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, he's going to speak for himself. He's going to testify. Galileo said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, reason would that I should bear with you. Listen, if this guy did something against humanity, against morals, I'm sick and tired of you guys. But if that was the case, if it was a criminal case, I, I, I okay, I'll give you the time. But if it be a question of words and names and of your law, so that shows you right there, we're not talking about government law, we're talking about the law of Moses. Again, what they use for Jesus on Pilate. They told Pilate, our law says that that man should be killed. And they had no authority to kill him. Look ye to it. I don't want you do it. For I will be no judge of such matter. It's not my concern. And he dragged them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took Sonathus, and he's in 1 Corinthians 1 1, by name. The chief ruler of the synagogue. Guess who else lost their position at the synagogue? Sinophthesis. And again, he's mentioned in 1 Corinthians 1.1. 1, 1. The chief ruler of the synagogue. So that day, the synagogue lost a lot of people. I can only just imagine next synagogue service, they, they're all sitting there like, well, where did all the leaders go? Oh, they're at the First Baptist Church of Corinth, or whatever they called it. <laughs> oh, poop. <laughs> and beat him before the judgment seat. And Galileo cared for for none of those things. They take this guy out who's trusted Christ and beat him. Before this guy who's in charge of this city. He ain't like, who cares? Now listen to me. You better thank God you got a, you got a nation that's got a police and some kind of authority. That, listen, right now in things in America, if somebody would go to a court, if they're standing in a courtroom today, and one guy started beating up another guy, beating him. I guarantee the sheriff's department would try to stop it. The judge would do some kind of ruling. This guy looks at this this beating of this fellow and says, I don't care. I don't care at all. And Paul, after this, tarried yet a good while. So that, that didn't scare him off. And then took his leave of the brethren. He leaves brethren there. They're saved. And sailed thence into Syria. Oh, look at that. That's, that's modern day newspaper today. And with him, Priscilla and Aqua, so they travel with him, having shorn his head in Central Korea, for he had a vow. And you would run this back to... Oh... Numbers 6.18. He's making a vow to the Lord. That's what he's doing. He came to Ephesus. Book of Ephesians. Epistle to the Ephesians. So Ephesians was founded after Corinth. You're not going to find Colossae because that's not the church that Paul, Paul wrote to him. But he never visited him. And left him there. Priscilla and Acre. But he himself entered into the synagogue. There he goes again. And reason with the Jew. Now it says reason. It means he would sit down or maybe preach or something. But he would do it in some kind of order. I don't know. I would think order he would take what the minister preached that morning, that afternoon. And whatever he would preach, like Philip did with the Ethiopian eunuch, he would try to show them Christ by what the morning message was. Oh, what was that? And reason with the Jews. 
when they desired him to tarry longer time with them, he consented not. The, the Ephesians wanted him to stay. But he's onward. He's going. He's moving. And the Holy Spirit of God doesn't say, hey, stay here and work with these guys. The Corinthians, you had to. Man, they need a lot of work. And Paul, they're going to need a lot of work after you're done. But Ephesians, he sets them up. He builds the church. He establishes it. He ordained leaders. Time to go. You guys are well enough on your own. And they desired him to stay. But, but bade them for, for, farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem. He's got his eyes set to go to Jerusalem. That would be his downfall. But I will return again unto you, if God will. Now that's where you would get Lord willing, if God will. I'll come back, Lord willing. Don't know, may die, may end up somewhere else. But my intention is to come back to you. And how strong are those intentions? If God will allow it to happen, I'll be back. And he sailed from Ephesus. And when he had landed at Caesarea and gone up and saluted the church. How you doing? You know, he didn't walk to them. Oh, hell. No, he said, how you guys doing? What's going on? What, anything new? Hey, what you doing? What's going on? Would you like to hear about my trip? Good to meet you. New Christian. Hey, how you guys doing? Old Christians. Wow, good to see you serving. Saluted the church and he went down to Antioch. There's Antioch again. And after he spent some time there, Antioch, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and Pergamum in order, strengthening all the disciples. So he's helping them out. Well, we had this concern in this church, Paul. What do you say about it? Uh, hey, we're just getting so persecuted, Paul. Help us. Pray for us. Uh, okay. We're just down. We're just, you know, okay. Relax. He would help. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria. Oh, there's an Alexandria. He was born there. And an eloquent man, mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This is that epistle. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. That's a downfall. When he's preaching, he's preaching wrong. He's got the zeal, but he's preaching wrong. And he just happens to go to Ephesus. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. He's doing the same thing Paul's doing. Whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them, brought him in their home, and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Now how would they have known the way of God more perfectly? From Paul. They got to correct this young man, or, or they got to correct this man. You're a little off on your doctrine, but you're off on your doctrine. Things have changed since the John since John's baptism. Now, do you see the complete switch that we're doing through Acts? Things are not the same anymore. This man has been preaching what John the Baptist preached before Jesus Christ came, before the death, burial, and resurrection. What would Aquila and Priscilla teach this guy? The gospel of Jesus Christ. He died for our sins. You wouldn't have known that from John's baptism. He was buried and he rose again the third day. You got to hear the word. You got to believe with your heart. You got to confess with your mouth. And then you get baptized. And when he was disposed to pass into Achilia, the brethren wrote, Oh, look at that. They wrote to him, encouraging him. 
exhorting the disciples to receive him. Hey, here comes Apollos. He's corrected now. He's well now. He's one of us. He's saved. Take him in. Whatever he needs, let him preach. Who, when he was come, helped them much, which had believed through grace. This guy, he's, he's going around, he's helping Christians, he's strengthening Christians. He needed a little help for himself, but then look at what the time that Priscilla and Aquila had doing with this man, and now look what he's doing. He's a, um, I'm trying to think what he would, he's an evangelist. He's going around helping. For he was mighty convinced, to, uh, for he mightily convinced the Jews, and that publicly, showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ, exactly what Paul was doing, exactly what Aquila is doing, exactly what all the disciples are going. He's going about teaching those Jews from what, what they have, the Old Testament, that Jesus is Christ. And Christ had to die, he had to be buried. And he rose again. That's the gospel. So now you see Paul's going south. Apollo's going. Looks like Paul's almost following the same land that Paul had done. And didn't straighten the Christian because there's no Bible. We've seen only, only two writings mentioned so far. Possibly three. James from, from Jerusalem. This letter is being sent in the hand of this guy that received him. He's certified. There was a couple other places where just, you know, letters were being sent. Some of those letters we have. Some of those letters we don't have. We don't need a letter that says, Apollos is, is certified. Apollos can't come to your church. He's absent with the body and present with the Lord. We don't need any more certification. His name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But why was Paul given this letter? Because who else would know who he was? As he's going about, yeah, we heard of uh, uh, Aquila, and we heard of uh, Priscilla. And if they say you're okay, that looks like they're, it's their signature, they're writing, they're okay. So the churches are being smart by one thing we see. They're not just accepting anybody to come in and teach. Or preach. You better have a reference for somebody we know. And that reference that we know better be that you have the authority by God to tell us. Because we're going to go into the epistles that, that Paul writes. All through now, we'll go through all the books of Paul. You're going to see Paul is telling these churches, he's writing, there's going to be deceivers out there. There are deceivers there now. And Apollos gets his writing, hey, I'm not a deceiver. And it's to show the church their love and help them say, we, this guy is approved or this guy has no credentials at all. So they're not just taking anybody in the churches. That's a smart church. I've seen churches today where people come in and, and the pastor allows them time and stuff like that. And it's a mess.